of uh, Skype, Martin. It is good to have you uh, with us tonight. How quickly did it take you to make that decision? Because you were amongst the first airlines that basically said, we're not flying over Belarus. Uh, good evening. Uh, it happened uh, uh, only 30 minutes from here, from our headquarters. Uh, and when we heard of that diversion of Ryanair, uh, we immediately uh, took a decision uh, as a precaution to understand what happened. And we couldn't get at that time any proper information, so we diverted the flights around Belarusian airspace uh, immediately uh, when that happened, when Ryanair was still in Minsk on the ground. And then it took quite a while until we got confirmation what happened, and until then we avoided the airspace. Now we're waiting for uh, authorities to say that we cannot fly there anyway, and I expect that to happen tonight. Uh, just do it on a commercial basis. How long can you keep that going? How long can you keep avoiding Belarus airspace without it being a toll on your airline? Uh, of course, it is a cost. It, it will cost us several million if we have to do that. But uh, we can do that. We have a lot of destinations we can fly via the north. This is Russia or we go through Poland, Lithuania and the south. It's about 10 minutes. It depends on, on which destination. And we can do that. So we have also a, a big part of our flights going to the west. So it's right. not an issue to avoid it. Of course, it's, it's a 10 minute delay and it is a cost. Martin, the, talk to me about the significance. Uh, as an airline CEO, you, you, what, what, what Belarus did was pretty unthinkable in civil aviation. So how significant is it, from your point of view, that the European Union and others send a strong message? Uh, from an aviation, I'm, I'm an airliner, not a politician. It's a very serious issue. Any emergency is serious because life are at risk. And, and we, ha we do not have an official report. We have what uh, Ryan has said and some other sources. So uh, based on that, I think it's a very, very serious incident if we look at what that flight did and uh, what risk was put at a civil aircraft. And uh, we shouldn't have that uh, flying because we have global standards in aviation. And if they are not insured, then something has to happen. So from an airline point of view, we want to um, have maximum safety and flying uh, all over the world has to be safe. And if not, these airspaces are avoided. And in terms of how the pilots, what you would tell your pilots to do in such a situation. Now, you probably hadn't thought of this before, but I'm guessing over the last 24 hours, you and your chief pilot maybe have thought, well, what would we have told our, our, our um, uh, pilots to do? What would it have been? Um, there is procedures for exactly these cases. Uh, so the Ryanair pilots had a checklist for that. We have these checklists on board. Uh, the difference is we would have been able to communicate with our crew if they would have asked what to do. Uh, I think that was not the case in Ryanair. But uh, the pilots had to act. If they were intercepted, if that is true, then you as a pilot have to follow that fighter aircraft uh, because you are forced to land. So it's clear if in an, in, on an international flight, if a military aircraft forces you to follow as a civil aircraft, you have to do so for the safety of the passengers. Martin, we have a couple of minutes left. I just want to turn to other issues, just particularly, of course, um, the, the, the reopening of uh, European travel and the, the vacation uh, and the holidays. Do you, do you believe you can salvage something in 2021? Now major destinations like Portugal, Spain, um, Greece are opening up. Uh, actually, yes, we, we, ju we just had a sales action, the first one now after the pandemic starting last week, and we see a surge in bookings, of course, coming from a different level now, but we see exactly the countries you mentioned now, there's a, such a strong demand, and I think the US has seen that for the domestic market, we see the same here now, uh, and uh, airlines are now adding even flights to what they thought they're going to do. So we will see a strong summer as vaccination levels also in Europe are going up. So we, we see that and uh, I think it's lasting now if we look at the last three weeks in the bookings coming in. Good to talk to you, Martin. Thank you for, for taking time tonight. We'll talk more. In fact, we will check in again as the summer moves on. I want to hear more about how you're doing and, and, and how, how your load factors and how things are going. Thank you, Martin.